Hi folks, let's walk through some of the cam for this part in Fusion 360. And at the end, let's walk through some other really good tips and tricks if you're brand new to machining. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. This video was inspired because our local makerspace uh, called the Idea Lab at Zane State just got a Tormach 440, which is awesome. And it's really fun to see folks that are brand new to machining and help walk them through that process. So we've got this part modeled up. Let's say we want to machine out this cavity here on our Tormach 440. We'll hop from model into cam. First thing we'll do, create a new setup. Click setup. And notice what happened. The transparent box is slightly bigger than the part. So as I orbit around, you can see it's got some extra material on the left, the right, the top, the bottom, and it would have it on the front and the back as well. So why did that happen? We move over to the stock tab. The mode is called relative size box. Now Fusion means well here and there's some cool features to this, but if you're getting started, I'm gonna recommend you switch this to fixed size box. And again, at the end of the video, we'll talk about where to buy that raw material. I want you to grab your calipers, measure your raw material, and let's say it was a piece of extrusion, which it most likely is in this sort of size. So the width is our X dimension, that's left to right. That's the dimension that we want our saw cut edge to be on. And let's say it's a little bit longer than four inches, and I'd rather be careful or conservative here. And the Y is probably gonna be pretty close to exactly being four inches. The reason that we want the front and back sides in terms of the Y to be your extrusion edge is when we set that part up, we want that clean and square extrusion edge to be what our jaws are squeezing against. Take a look, and let's say it is one inch, so we've got a little bit of extra material on the top and the bottom. Go back to setup, and this is really important on terms of your work coordinate system. This happens to be correct. The Y is forward, the X is to the right. Uh, if it's not correct or you wanna learn more about changing it, again, we'll have a video at the end. Click OK. So we've got our setup one. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna face the part off. 2D face. And the face operation is really nice because it takes into account most of what it needs to know. It's smart enough to just figure that out. So we're gonna, all we need to do is pick a tool. We don't have any tools here. So you can go into the samples library and go through and go down to say inch aluminum, which is awesome. I think it's really cool that Fusion has this. Or you can head over to the new NYC CNC website under speeds and feeds, Tormach. We've got some NYC CNC Fusion 360 tool libraries and templates. I checked my Tormach aluminum library and I'm going to pick the Superfly face mill, which is a great way to deck down the material. Click OK. And the only thing I'm going to change is under passes, fourth tab over. I want to make sure it doesn't take too much depth of cut. So I'm going to say the maximum step down is 0.04 inches. There are some things we could do here a little bit more aggressively, but I find when you're getting started, it's much more rewarding to make a part successfully. And then let's worry about pushing the machine and pushing the feeds and speeds and tooling later. One last really good thing to check is the stock offset. We can add about a quarter of an inch, and that's just gonna make sure that the Superfly gets all the way off the material. And the fun thing is it doesn't really add much to our machining time. So click OK. Awesome thing about Fusion, you can look at the color code of the toolpath. So yellow is what's called a linking move. So that means it's going in or out of the cut, but it's not actually cutting. Green is your lead in or lead out. So here it's leading into this toolpath and then it's leading out as it wraps around. And blue is when it's actually in the cut. If we click on this uh, simulation button right here, I like to actually turn stock off at first. You can hit play and you can watch that tool move around our part. Awesome, you can turn stock back on and also watch how it cuts. I'm gonna to jump to the end of the toolpath just to see what happened. And you can see the CAD model kind of poking through here on the lines of our stock. In fact, if I turn up that transparent, you can see we've decked it down to our part. Awesome. Next up, 2D adaptive clearing. 
We're going to do the rest of this with one tool. Uh, I'll come back to a recommended additional tool to consider purchasing, but getting started, let's keep it simple. We're going to pick a standard three flute quarter inch end mill for us. This has always been tool 31 since the day we got started. Click OK. Here is that tool that we recommend. It is a quarter inch diameter tool with a three quarter inch flute length. Speeds and feeds, we're gonna take all the RPMs we've got on that 440, which is 10,000. We're gonna go at 1,000 of an inch per tooth. We, again, can run that tool harder. Let's keep it easy. So lead in, I'll have match our cutting feed rate of 30 inches, 30 inches. The rest of that's okay. Geometry, so where do we want it to machine? I'm gonna pick that, but really important, I also need to click this. These 2D toolpaths are what I call dumb toolpaths. They'll go anywhere you want, so it's up to you to give it the areas that it wants to machine. So by clicking this, see how it put the red arrow on the inside? So it's gonna machine everything inside of this square, but we don't want it to machine our bean, so by clicking on that, it put the red arrow on the other side. Fusion gets this arrow correct almost every single time, but if it didn't for some example, you could click on it and it would flip it to the other side. Now, one of the things I like to do is just click OK. There's more I want to edit here, but I'd rather click OK for two reasons. One, it's gonna give me a tool path, and that's really nice to see that we don't have a problem or error. The second thing is that by clicking OK, it actually created the tool path, which means I can now right click it and hit edit. If I hadn't first clicked OK, let's say I'd gone through and spent a few minutes and changed a bunch of settings and then I accidentally hit escape or my computer freezes or fusion crashes, I've lost all that work. This way it's giving me a little partial save. Height is good, passes tab, optimal load. I like to start at 20% of the tool diameter. So you can do math right inside of fusion. I'm gonna say a quarter inch tool, 0.25, times 0.2 for 20%. And we're gonna leave, let's leave 5 thousandths radial stock. This adaptive is a roughing strategy. So it's not a finishing strategy, especially when it comes to the aesthetic and the precision of the sidewalls. So by leaving 5 thousandths radially, radial, think of radius or the side of the tool, we're gonna come back and clean that up. Click OK, and we should be good. Let's take a look at the depth of that pocket. Hit I on your keyboard and pick that line. And see how that line is 0.5 inches? That's right on the edge of being too much with a quarter inch tool. Our rule of thumb that we talk about in our getting started for speeds and feeds video is no more than 200%. So 200% of a quarter inch tool would be exactly 0.5 inches. So yes, this would work, but if it's your first part, again, don't break the tool. So let's take that passes tab, multiple depths, and let's say 0.25 inch. That's gonna take it in two depths of cut. The other thing that's really great about this is that one of the most common causes for breaking tools, especially when you're getting started, is you accidentally chip weld, meaning you don't evacuate the chips or you have a problem with the chips getting stuck to the tool. That's a more common problem the deeper you go. So by taking this in two depths of cut, although you can see we got a problem, there's actually three, we're minimizing the chance that our coolant line or our fog buster has to be just perfect and better chance that we're gonna get a good recipe. So why is that taking it in three depths of cut? It's pretty cool actually, take a look. So edit our adaptive. Let's go back to that height tab. I said it was okay, it's not. And here's why. Fusion wants to understand what's the top height and the bottom height of the work I have to go do. If I orient this head on, and let's work from the bottom up here. So the bottom height is the selected contour. What does that mean? Well, it's the geometry that I picked here. So that's actually perfect. That's where I want it to machine down to. So what's our problem? Our problem is the top height. The top height is the stock top. Remember when we set up our stock, we told it it's a one inch piece of material. So we've got about half that extra stock up above here. So we just told the adaptive, remember it's a dumb tool path, it'll do whatever we want. We told it that the top height is stock top, and because we said, hey, you need to go quarter inch step down, it thinks it's gotta start at the stock top. Well, we just machined that down with our superfly before this. So let's change our top height to model top. And watch what's gonna happen. This blue line is gonna move down to here. 
And if you didn't know what that blue line was, if you orbit around, you can see that's called top. And it's a little confusing, but the negative 0.125 means how far off the stock it is. Fusion could do a little better job of explaining those things. We'll click OK, and I bet you we're going to get two depths of cut pass now. So one and two. Perfect. Little tip. If you got three there, sometimes what can happen is you need to say depth of cut could be just a hair more, say 251, and that would help you get avoid that sort of whisper third cut at the floor. So let's simulate it. Click on Setup. Go back to Simulate. Now, I don't want to watch the face again. We already did that. So click on this Go to Next Operation. Play. So there it's doing this spiral move, linking in. And again, one reason I really like the Fog Buster uh, versus flood coolant is you can use that air pressure to help blow the chips out of there. And evacuating the chips is a really important role in what coolant does, more so really for a lot of the newcomers to CNC than actual cooling the chip or the other benefit that coolant has, which is adding some lubricity, almost like a soap, making it slippery when it cuts. And this is what Fusion is really, really good at. It's called adaptive machining or high-speed machining or trochoidal machining, where it's moving the toolpath to take constant engagements. And what I love about it is it means you're never going to dive bomb that end mill into a corner where it's going to all of a sudden take a much, much more aggressive cut. That's how you either break end mills or cause them to clog up, or you can rip the part out of your work holding, or you can stall the spindle. So adaptive is great because I have the confidence to set up a toolpath. I'll take a simulation, but when I run it, after I start watching it for a second to make sure it's okay, I'll usually walk away. Now, if you're brand new, sit there and enjoy the show. Adaptive is really cool. Uh, when we started this about 10 years ago, it was a very expensive or more complicated uh, endeavor to get into software that was capable of doing this. And I love that nowadays it's there for anybody to take advantage of it. Pretty cool. So one of the things I'm noticing, let's fast forward here. So I can pause it and scrub along. It's leaving those corners. Did it clean them up here? I think it's going to clean them up. That's actually awesome. Perfect. It did come back and clean them up. So see, again, it's taking those little nibbles to make sure it doesn't take too much in one pass. Perfect. You can jump all the way to the end and take a look. That looks good. What do we have left to do? Well, remember that 2D adaptive is just a roughing strategy. We need to finish the toolpath. And awesome trick in Fusion, right click on 2D Adaptive, create derived operation, 2D milling, and 2D contour is the operation we want. I'll click it, and I'll just click OK. Let's see how she looks. It's perfect with one exception. Because I added the multiple depths, it brought those over. But otherwise, the cool thing about the derivative operation or create derived operation is it carries all your settings over. I don't want the multiple depth of cut here. No problem taking it in, in one depth. And actually, we want it in one depth to give us a better surface finish. But one of the things I love about it is it saves you from having to remember those settings or add the tool back or reselect lines. Really nice. One other little pro tip, right click, edit. You ever seen a machined part where it has a little trough line or following around it where it came back and did a cleanup? It's less likely to have that if you're using the same tool as you did to rough it, but we don't always do that. So a good tip to get in the habit of is we'll make use of this stock to leave. We'll check that. We don't want to leave any radial stock. That's the sidewalls. But on the axial, let's leave one thousandth of an inch. That's about one quarter the thickness of a piece of printer paper. So it's pretty darn thin. And what that does though, is it prevents the bottom of the tool from touching our floor, especially if we have a very slight mismeasurement in the height of our tool. And it makes your parts look a little better and it's not going to affect your tolerance or functionality whatsoever. Click OK and we're done. So again, simulate, fast forward. Last tip I like to do, is see this light bulb up here? Turn it off. What that does is that stops your CAD model. Let me put on the transparency here. It stops your CAD model from what I call backfilling or backstopping your simulation. Sometimes the simulation looks like it was perfect, but your tool actually ramped or crashed through your part, but you don't see it because your, your CAD model was there to kind of make it look like it was okay. So toggle that off. Now we get a view, either transparent or not, of what our part really should look like when we're done. Awesome. 
So what's that new website we've had? We're really excited for this. Uh, we got started in this about 10 years ago. I didn't know what an Envil was or a Bridgeport was, and we love doing what we do on our YouTube channel. We love trying to pay it forward, and we love sharing our knowledge with folks. So we've created this new NYC CNC website, and our goal is that I shouldn't have to explain the website to you, because hopefully it's obvious. Uh, this is what I will call a minimum viable product. The site is not done yet. We've got a lot more content to add. I would say that our Fusion 360 content is probably the best off right now. We've got Fusion 360 training examples in CAD and CAM and some of the other environments. And one of the things that I love the most is not just the machining side, but let's talk about business. Let's talk about entrepreneurship, how to come up with ideas, how to execute those ideas, how to grow those businesses. We're going to have a lot more here on, on getting started with Tormach and other machines, but Guide to buying raw material. If you want to machine this part and you're brand new, where do you buy that piece of aluminum? We've got a video here as well as links to walking through where we recommend buying pieces of aluminum, whether it's new or drops. Under speeds and feeds, Tormach, we've got videos already on different tools, different materials with speeds and feeds examples. We're also going to make some of the content exclusive to folks that subscribe. You can join here on the subscribe page. We'll be sharing all of the NYC CNC tool libraries, all the cam templates, as well as some of the more advanced entrepreneurship and business topics. So we appreciate the folks that have helped us get to where we are and we love doing what we're doing folks. Thanks for watching. Take care.